Air mode is really Beta Flight's problem child because it's necessary, but it causes so many problems, especially if you fly a Cinewhoop or a tiny whoop, or any small ducted quad. If you fly those with air mode on and you like smack into the wall, and it just sticks to the wall and won't come off. Or you hit a branch or something and it overreacts. And you can turn air mode off and it does stop that from, from happening. But then all the problems that air mode was designed to fix come back and then you got a whole nother set of problems. So what if there was a way to have air mode only when you really needed it and get rid of it when you don't need it? And that's what I'm going to show you in this video today. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Before I show you the solution to the problem, let's just take a brief minute and talk about what air mode is, what it does, and why it came about in the first place. And the problem that air mode solves is that when you lower the throttle all the way down, like especially to all the way to like zero throttle, then the quadcopter loses authority. And what that means is if you fly a quadcopter with air mode out, as long as you keep the throttle raised, everything's fine. But the minute you go to zero throttle, like if you just did a big punch out and you're gonna split S over a tree, or even if you're just in a sharp turn and you cut the throttle and you just accidentally bottom out the throttle, as soon as you do that, if air mode is off, the quad just kind of goes, Bleh. it just kind of falls. I don't mean that it goes, Ear. I mean it kind of just goes, Ugh. It loses all its authority and it just kind of, and if you, if you really push the sticks hard, you can get it to move, but it just, it's like, it just, ugh, bad. Turning on air mode fixes that problem, but it causes all the other problems I talked about in the intro to this video. So the solution, and I can't believe in all this time, I never thought of this. In fact, I have to give credit to a guy who emailed me and said, hey, what if you did this? And I don't even know if he came up with the idea, because then I bounced the idea off Aaron Ciotti, who is really big in the micro scene, and he was like, yeah, I've heard of that. I've heard of people doing that. So credit to whoever came up with this idea. What you do is you have air mode be on when the throttle is down, because that's when you really need air mode, at zero throttle. And then when you raise the throttle, you have air mode turn itself off when you kind of don't need it anyway. So that as you're flying, if you bounce off a wall with the throttle raised, the quad doesn't go and stick to the wall. It just bounces off the wall. Now, I'm gonna show you how to set this up in OpenTX, but I need to give you a heads up that I am, tomorrow I'm leaving for Rotoriot Rampage. And I really wanna get this video out because I'm, I just, I wanna get it out because I need content for the days when I'm gonna be away but I don't have time to go test fly this. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. And at the very least, it'll be an interesting tutorial in how to set up OpenTX. And then I'm gonna <laughs> let you guys test it. I know that people are doing this, so I, I think that it should have some value, but I'm gonna let you test it out and you can put down in the comments. And if it's garbage and you say it didn't work for me, well, people can just read the comments and they can, they can decide for themselves. So here's how you set this up. And the first place I'm going to go is in the model setup screen, and then I'm going to page over to the mixes screen. And I'm going to scroll down. I've got this set up on channel 7. And here's how you're going to set this up. And there may be a more elegant way to set this up. Like I tried to come up with a, a, a way to set this up that didn't involve as many mixer lines, just because uh, with a background in programming, I kind of wanted to try to show off my chops and be efficient. And I kind of couldn't. So I was just like, screw it. Let's just do it the brute force way. And the idea is, like, what's the logic we're going for here? The idea is that when switch SC is up, air mode is off. When switch SC is in the middle position, air mode is permanently on, if for some reason you wanted to do that. And when switch SC is down, air mode is on, only at low throttle. So here are the mixer lines, and I'm going to show you each one of them one by one. The first one, we have a source of max and a weight of 100%, which forces the channel to go high when the switch is in this position. The other two relevant things you need to see are that the switch parameter is set to switch SC up, 
And the easiest way to do that is to just click until it flashes and then flip the switch into the up position and it will automatically, as I move the switch, it'll read the switch position right there. You don't need to scroll through the menu. The other thing you want to have is that the multiplex value needs to be set to replace and that will cause each subsequent line to replace the ones before it instead of adding to them, which is what mixer lines normally do. Line number two is going to be as follows. We're going to have a source of max and a weight of negative 100, which will then turn error mode on. That's going to put the, the aux channel in the other position. The switch value here is going to be not switch SC up. And the easiest way to do that is to single click, move the switch into the switch up position, and then long click the jog wheel and choose invert. And that inverts the logic from switch up to not switch up. And then again, we're going to have multiplex of replace. The next two lines in the mixer are for that third condition where we want air mode only on low throttle. And in order to do this, we need to start working with logical switches. Uh, so I'm going to page now to the logical switches screen and you're going to see two logical switches here. And what these logical switches do is they detect when the throttle is either less than a value of negative 80 or greater than a value of negative 80 and switch SC is in the down position. So you can see that if I have the switch in the up position, these two lines don't light up at all, no matter what I do. But if I flip switch SC to the down position, then switch L1 is going to turn bold and become true when the throttle is low. And as I raise the throttle, switch L2 is going to become true. So as I move the throttle, uh, that, tell, that basically lets me decide which, uh, which position the throttle's in. Now that value of negative 80, you could tweak that if you wanted to. The values go from negative 100 to positive 100. So a value of negative 80 is about 10% of the stick travel. The lower 10% of the stick travel is where air mode will be on, and the upper 90% is where air mode will be off. If for some reason you wanted to change that threshold, you could just remember that it's negative 100 to positive 100. So the range is actually 200. So then those last two lines are going to be tied to those two logical switches and they're going to become true when the throttle is either raised or, or lowered and I'm going to activate air mode based on the throttle position, but again, only if the switch is in the down position. So let's just demonstrate this real quick and then we'll go take a look in beta flight and see how to set it up over there. Here I am ready to fly and I've got the switch in the up position because switches pushed away is just the default position most people put their transmitters in when they're getting ready to fly. Air mode is off and we can see that channel 7 is at 100%. That's going to be air mode off. If we fly and we flip to the middle position, air mode is turned on. And then if we, and regardless of the throttle position, air mode stays on, channel seven is low. And then if we flip to the third position on the switch, the air mode will be on or off depending on the throttle position. Throttle is up, air mode is off. Throttle is down, air mode is on. So here's how you set up your Betaflight aux mode, just in case you need a, a quick look at how to do that. But basically it's just like I've been describing. When the aux mode is high, air mode is off. When the aux mode is low, air mode is on. It's pretty simple. The only thing then to do is for you to try this out and be a guinea pig. Like, I don't think it's dangerous. It's not going to make your quad fly to the moon, but just try it out and see if like you notice any differences in flight performance when air mode kicks in versus when it turns off or if you find this to be valuable. If you fly indoors, if you do whoop racing or center whoop flying, do you find that it keep, protects your quad from like smacking off the walls and stuff? Or if you have any other tips or resources about how to improve this, let me know. Like I said, I just wanted to get this out there before I leave for Rampage. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or Join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.